I'm Gabe. And I'm Johnny. Today we'll compare maps from the Zelda titles to see in which aspects the land of Hyrule has changed over the ages, and how it still looks so familiar to us. We'll go through every map of every mainline Zelda so far. But that's just for completion's sake, as our main focus here is to compare maps of Hyrule, and not other lands that we don't really know where they are located in the globe, or playing if you are one of those. This will probably be quite a long video, but if you like to overthink Zelda, I'm sure you'll find something interesting along the way. Let's go over this as a somewhat archaeological quest, considering the maps as cartographical documents found over Hyrule. While the games run release in chronological order, we'll follow each title launch date as the age of the document. This way, the first Zelda from the NES will not only be the oldest map we've discovered, but also the oldest map of Hyrule ever made, and the Breath of the Wild map the most recent one just so we have a simple order to follow. We'll also stop to take a look at some relevant architectural elements as well, especially if they will come back in other titles. Just like in real life, newer should be but aren't necessarily more accurate than the previous ones. Many maps of our history have omitted places which the creators didn't know about or didn't judge relevance to specify. Our Earth has also had some distorted maps and this is no different in Hyrule. So, if a place has been moved a bit from one map to the next, that's perfectly acceptable for us. Things you need to have been moved quite far to be actually considered a change in the landscape. This video took quite some time to be made, with all the research and a lot of time staring at the screen, but there's still a good chance we overlooked something, so feel free to point out any mistakes we made or ask questions if there's anything that wasn't clear. We'll do our best to answer all of the three comments we usually get. So, for The Legend of Zelda on the NES from 1986, let's take a look at the major points of interest that will come back in many future maps. The Death Mountain is located in the mountainous area up north, with its entrance hidden behind a wall on the peculiar rock formation known as the Spectacle Rock. Going east from there, we reach a high lake that is the main source of fresh water in Hyrule. Its river splits the kingdom in two, going southwest forming a huge mass of water in central Hyrule before continuing south, likely towards the ocean. However, due to the limited details of this map, we don't know if this area has stronger currents like a river or if it's more like a lake, but it is large enough to contain two large islands, with an underground dungeon on each one. The first has the remains of a peculiar large dead tree, and the second has unnamed ruins. There is plenty of vegetation across the map, but one that deserves some attention is the Lost Woods, far on the southwest. There's also a likely exaggerated depiction of a graveyard to the west. The shoreline is visible across the whole eastern side, another large lake seemingly apart from the main water source, and there seems to be an unusual arid region on the northeastern corner of central Hyrule. Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link from 1987, also for the NES. At first, we are faced with a highly unfamiliar territory, but after exploring more of the land, we come across a tiny corner of the map pointing to the Death Mountain, revealing the area explored in the previous game, with the spectacle rock, large lakes, forest and cemetery. But I can't quite say if the proportions of this map are even remotely accurate. This tiny area could be represented so small simply because there was nothing new to be explored there, so we didn't present it a large eventless area. The reverse seems to happen on the far opposite side of the map, the Labyrinth Island, or at least I think it's an island, even though it's depicted as large as a continent, because in this game we see Link in a rather large scale when traversing the land, and the Labyrinth is just the bare minimum size for his sprite to pass through, so it leads me to believe many areas of this map may have been heavily distorted based on importance instead of accuracy. The true proportions could very well be closer to this map that I found than what we experienced in the game. But with this title having came out so long ago and doing what it could with the limitations of the hardware back then, we will need to have new games showing us this greater high road to have anything more concrete about this map. A link to the past for the Super Nintendo from 1991. Here we're back to the old Hyrule. First of all, there's a theory that the whole of Zelda 1 happened in the northwest corner in the Death Mountain area, and it does fit somewhat well in the map with the position of the Spectacle Rock, the flow of the river and the graveyard location, especially considering how large the mountain chain was in the first game, and that areas not relevant to the present title are simply not shown, like the islands and forests being pushed further west. 
However, it still fits much better as the whole area since we can see the ocean framing the whole right side of the map and the river flowing to it below. Kakariko village will become famous for its graveyard in future installments. It also fits the placement of the graveyard from previous games. Hyrule Castle sits in a large island in the middle of the river, where we've seen some ruins. And as a plus we have some arid terrain on central eastern Hyrule, close to where the desert looking area from the first Zelda is. Some new things here are the lost woods now to the northwest, and while we'll see the forest move around quite easily over the ages, here is also where we first see the Master Sword, or more relevant for us now, the location of the Pedestal of Time, where it sits, deep within the woods. The river continues flowing to Lake Hylia, and by its location, it seems to be the isolated lake we've seen, and it looks like the river used to flow more to the west, where a swamp is now formed, but over time moved to Lake Hylia. And now to the southwest corner, we can see a desert past some narrow cliffs, so maybe it should be there as well in the original Zelda, as there are some rocks in the same corner. But maybe they are impassable at the time, or the desert would be just relevant for the story told. As an extra here, we have the Dark World as a corrupted reflection of Hyrule, created by Ganon. While most of the topology is quite similar in there, the desert is now a deep swamp and Lake Hylia is partly frozen. On the structure sides, Hyrule Castle is replaced by a pyramid in the center of the Dark World, where Ganon awaits to try to breach into Hyrule. The hero of this era lived with his uncle south of Hyrule Castle, almost in the center of the map. Next is Link's Awakening for the Game Boy from 1993. It happens in Koholite Island, only seen in this game, and it's a dream. So it's not relevant for us right now, here's the map for you to take a look, and let's move on to the next one. Going to 3D, we have the Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64, from 1998. Here we have a slight problem, as the areas you play in don't match the map in the pause menu. But since the areas where Link can walk in game would realistically overlap each other if they were made all together as a single large world, we'll consider the map from the menu as a cartographic representation of Hyrule made during that era. Quite glancing at first is how widely different this land looks from the previous ones, but most of the differences simply come from the fact that it's not represented in a grid structure anymore. The heavily wooded land of Hyrule gives place here to a large field in the middle, where south of Hyrule Castle Town is located the famous Long Long Ranch, shifting the north a bit, something that have occurred in our planet numerous times in the past by the way, the Death Mountain, now home of the Goron, is still to the north of the land, with the crater now engulfing what could be a spectacle rock, and represented to the iconic ring of clouds said to represent the state of the volcano. Kakariko and its famous graveyard now living at the mountain foot, and as a small town probably destroyed many times over history, Kakariko will often change places from game to game. The source of water is still nearby, and probably in the same mountain range, and is now the Zora's domain, where the large large Jabu Jabu lives. The river winds a bit south, but it still goes around Hyrule Castle and Castle Town, housing the Pedals of Time and the Master Sword in a location close to where a church used to be in A Link to the Past, but not too far from where the pedestal was located, deep in the woods. The river continues further west, close to the edge of the now called Gerudo Desert, before going back to Lake Hylia. Here I want to take a moment to take a look at Lake Hylia's topology, as it will be relevant in the future. There's a cliff where a laboratory was built, right next to it. There's a bridge linking to a small island before another bridge making a curve to a large island where a dead tree stands, and beneath this island lies the water temple, with its many serpent-like statues. The dead tree leads many to believe that this is the same island where the first dungeon is found in the Zelda for the NES. But since it's located so far south from the castle, I don't think that will be the case, as we'll see a better candidate with future evidence. So if the NES island is present here, I think it could be this area on the way upriver to the Zora's domain. The forest with the lost woods is now to the southeast, where the Kokiri live under the protection of the enormous Great Deku Tree, who, spoiler, dies and leaves its sprout to eventually grow into a new one. In the far side of the desert, it's also important to note the Desert Colossus, a place of religious importance to the Gerudo, featuring a gigantic statue of a supposedly unnamed goddess of theirs. It's important to note that in the future of Ocarina of Time, the Hyrule Castle was completely destroyed by Ganondorf, Castle Town was severely damaged and evacuated, and this iteration of Hyrule Castle was the most distinct of them all, as is generally portrayed with a squarish layout, very symmetrical building with towers around with blue rooftops. 
Here is asymmetrical, with fewer towers and green rooftops. In between eras of Ocarina of Time, happens Majora's Mask from 2000, also for the N64. While there is still some debate on the matter, here Link most likely travels to the parallel land or dimension of Termina while wandering in Lost Woods. Unlike most parallel lands, this one isn't as clear where each location would mirror Hyrule. The Death Mountain, for example, could be on the mountain range, where the Gorons live to the north, as there's even a bit of lava on Snowhead, but the Pinnacle Rock, far off the coast of the Great Bay to the west, could be the equivalent of the Spectacle Rock, and the Woodfall Temple in the Deku Swamp to the south seems located inside an inactive volcano crater, with the ring of clouds all around. Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, both for the Game Boy Color from 2001, give us the land of Labrina and Holodrum. They are not Hyrule, but it seems lazy to just leave the maps here, so let's overlap them with the map from Zelda 2. The river kinda fits, and the island... <sighs> I don't know, it's almost 2am and I'm tired, and we're not even halfway there, keep going. Four Swords for the Game Boy Color from 2002 doesn't feature much of a story and offers an extremely simplified version of Haru's map. Forest East, Sea more to the east, Death Mountain North, and the frozen Talos Cave to the southwest. There's not much else to show here, but we'll bring it back soon. Just hang in there. The Wind Waker for the GameCube from 2002 presents us with the flooded Hyrule, but it still retains most of its landmarks above sea level. From afar, we can see the two trunks of dead trees where the Kokiri forest used to be. One of them, the Forbidden Woods, is still have evidence of Kokiri houses. A new Great Deku tree lives inside the other, the Forest Haven. And we're told their Koroks are responsible for spreading its seeds across the islands around the Great Sea, so new forests may grow and eventually reclaim the land, giving us an explanation for the common shipment in forest locations. The most likely candidate for Death Mountain is the Dragon Roost Island, an active volcano with a ring of clouds and home to the Rito and their guardian deity, the Dragon Valu. Underwater, Hyrule Castle sits relatively in the middle of the map, now with a completely different architecture since its destruction in Ocarina of Time, and housing the Pedestal of Time, so maybe it was merged with the Temple of Time here. It's on an island in the middle of a large lake, fed by what would flow from the general direction of the Death Mountain range, and there's no sign of a castle town, but some ruins nearby. South of the castle is Ganon's Tower, which we haven't seen before. On the surface, the survivors of the submerged Kakariko and Castle Town now live in Windfall Island, and it even has reminders of the old windmill of Kakariko and the graveyard. A bit middle west, there's Great Fish Island, which was the home to Jabun, and with a lack of more evidence but this possible connection to the Zora, this could be where Lake Hyde was located before the flood. Up northwest, we have Ganondorf's base of operations, the Forsaken Fortress, located around where the Desert Colossus and Ganondorf's homeland would be. And not too far is the Mother and Child Islands, which will be referenced ahead. Here, Link parted from a small farmer slash fishing village on Outset Island, far to the southwest of the Great Sea. Now comes Four Swords Adventure for the GameCube from 2004. First, let's compare it a bit with the one from Four Swords, as it seems to basically expand the one. Wood, fire and ice are pretty close in between both games. Here, the lane doesn't look too far from the A Link to the Past layout. The most glaring differences being the fact that we've never seen what was beyond the desert and it seems Hyrule is somewhat surrounded by ocean. And there's an area called Frozen Hyrule, but this is said to have been caused by Ganon's magic and would likely return to the wetlands from the previous game. An odd thing here is how the large lake that feeds the rivers of Hyrule is now called Lake Hylia, and probably is not the same location that had its name before, and maybe where the Zora's domain would be. There's an interesting Temple of Darkness not very far from where the Forsaken Fortress was in the Wind Waker. And by the end game, the Tower of Winds appear, a bit south of Hyrule Castle, and maybe this could be the same structure as Ganon's Tower, also from the Wind Waker. Being a magical structure that can vanish explains its known appearance in most titles. Kakariko is close to both its location on Link to the Pass and Windfall Island. To the southeast, there is also the village of the Blue Maiden, and around the center of the map, Roma Range is located. The Gerudo that live in the desert are nomads, and now being called Desert of Doubt may indicate that they are now searching for their ancestral homeland. Further in the desert, there is a pyramid, housing the tridents that once belonged to Ganon, 
maybe as a reference to the pyramid he made while ruling the Dark World in A Link to the Past. The minish cap for the Game Boy Advance from 2004 seems to show us a similar Hyrule, but with vastly different names, such as Cranel Peak and Minish Woods. While it's not a bad fit with A Link to the Past map, we don't get to see the areas where Kakariko Village, the desert or even Death Mountain would be. Lake Hylia could be in the same location with an island with a tree but, while its position in relation to everything else seems off, the fact that we see it in the middle of a forest like in the first two games, it would look like it could be in the same lake. Now I think it's a good time to remember that the maps probably omit places not relevant to the legend being told, which explains the scope of this map and some slightly off locations. The Long Long Ranch is as close to the center as it can be if it wasn't for the Castle Tau being center in this map. And here Link lived with his grandfather, the Blacksmith, in a similar location to A Link to the Past. But with some evidence to show in a future map, it will seem that this is most likely a smaller section of the entire map of Hyrule, happening closer to Hyrule Castle and Castle Town, which makes sense that a story around minuscule beings not expanding so far across the land. Twilight Princess for the GameCube from 2006 gives us a much more detailed map. First off, we see several large canyons and hills all over Hyrule, splitting Hyrule Field in many separate areas, something that only happened during this era. And for the first time, we get a Hyrule separated by regions, according to their protected spirits. In the Elgin region, Kakariko at the base of the Death Mountain is looking very different, but the hidden village further north is supposed to be the old Sheikah founded Kakariko from Ocarina of Time. So, in the past, there was probably another path leading up to the volcano. The Zora's Domain is clearly displaced in the now called Lanaro region, as it had always been shown to the southeast of Death Mountain. Now it's in the center north of the whole map, and it seems to be a completely new location, with only the throne room located in a cave and most of the domain actually in open air. Looking at the map, we can see where the old Zora River used to flow from south of Kakariko like in Ocarina of Time. So this could mean the Zora, being responsible to safeguard the water source of all of Hyrule, could have moved once another river became the main source. This water probably comes from the ice melting from previously unknown area, the Snow Peak, to the northwest. And another interesting detail here is the existence of the mother and child rocks. While with an enormous difference in size, it's not located far from the mother and child islands from the Great Sea. Following the water flow, we pass through a much more populated castle town, again centered in the map, with water flowing all around it, making it possible to see it as an island like in the original Zelda and A Link to the Past. Then we get to Lake Hylia, that still looks quite familiar. From the northern entrance, there's now the Great Bridge of Hylia, that's the main difference following the path where there were some ruined pillars in Ocarina of Time, all the way to the island with the large dead tree. There's still a building where the laboratory used to be, and while the wooden bridges are no longer present, we can see the small island that stood halfway from the building and the main island. Below this tree island is a doorway that, in Twilight Princess era, leads to the shrine of the light spirit Lanairu that assumes the shape of a water serpent, and we can see many statues in its honoring site. Going back to Ocarina of Time, we can see these types of statues all around the water temple, located directly below the same island. The Gerudo Desert is still located somewhat close to Lake Hylia, but with the harsh terrain of this era, there seems to be no viable path by land to reach it. In the far side of the desert stands the Arbiter's Ground. This building lacks registries, but seems to be some sort of prison, and by the statues of the Gerudo goddess, was built in the spirit temple to imprison the Gerudo after the capture of Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time. The ruins outside, occupied by the Boblins, could be what little remained of the old Gerudo fortress, although it's depicted much closer to the spirit temple. Now to the south, there's the Faro region, which is mostly a large forested area. Here we have the Forest Temple, and when better examined, are composed of two gigantic trees, like the Forge Haven and Forbidden Woods in the Wind Waker. And inside them, there's evidence of Kokiri dwellings. Nearby, the most interesting contradiction presents itself. The old Temple of Time is still housed in the Master Surge, along with ruins from the old castle town from Ocarina of Time, now lie deep past Lost Woods. Many assume the forest covered this region and the kingdom expanded north, but many other hard-to-move locations, 
like The Hidden Village, Lake Hylia, The Desert, Death Mountain, and Conquer Forest fit Ocarina of Time's layout. And more likely that this town with a very important location in it was moved south somehow to keep the Master Sword hidden and protected. As magic is a fact in this universe, it is a possibility, although one that we haven't seen any explanation so far. The Ordon region seems to be a sub-region of Faron's, and is the place where a secluded ranching community lives, composed, with the exception of the Hero of Twilight, exclusively of non-Hylian humans. In this game there is also the parallel Twilight Realm, but we never get to fully explore it, only the Palace of Twilight. Although it is accessed from the top of Arbiter's Ground, it's through a portal created by a magical mirror, so it doesn't necessarily would be located in the same location in the Twilight Realm. And since it's a palace for the Twilight royalty and has a fairly symmetrical design, I would take a guess and say that it's the world's equivalent of the Haru Castle. Phantom Hourglass for the Nintendo DS from 2007 directly continues the story from The Wind Waker. However, the map here is unreliable, as it is revealed at the ending of the story that it was another world ruled by Oshun, the Ocean King. So it is unknown if it was a parallel realm like Termina, which would make sense to have been flooded as well with the water from the Great Sea since there are physical pathways between them, or if it was a dreamlike realm like the Windfishes, especially since it stated that Link and Tetra were absent for about 10 minutes from their ship. Spirit Tracks, also for the Nintendo DS from 2009, introduced the new Haru Kingdom, founded by the Hero of Winds and Tetra, and is now ruled by their most likely granddaughter Zelda. This land had its own history before their arrival, with the Locomos using trails that are used in the present by trains as chains to hold the long-defeated Demon King Maladus imprisoned. The land does draw some parallels to the old Haru, with forests to the south, snow to the northwest, volcanoes to the northeast, and ocean to the southeast. We don't have any evidence of where this land is located in relation to the old Haru, besides the fact that they were facing north when departing from outside the island in the Wind Waker, and even that could just mean they would gather some supplies in windfall before the long voyage. This is quite a far shot, but I'll leave a little thought here. Assuming they travel north, this could be the first continent from Adventure of Link, being shown in a different era. The forests are around Saria Town, named after the first sage from Ocarina of Time. In the desert area by the ocean is the large sandy area where the graveyard with the king's grave is located. Scour Sword for the Nintendo Wii from 2011 We don't have a clear vision of the whole land here, especially since the areas are not accessible by foot during this era. And it makes sense from a historical perspective, since the people of Skyloft didn't know the layout of the land. Somewhere in the middle is the Sacred Grounds, where the large statue of Hyde would be settled, and where the future Temple of Time would probably be by the time of Ocarina of Time, as a pedestal for the Master Sword is already present here. So this central area is probably around where Haru Castle and Castle Town would eventually be built. To the north is still the volcanic area where the Elden Volcano is located, not yet being called Death Mountain. To the west we have the Lanairo Desert, with evidence that it was once a vast ocean, here was a construction also called Temple of Time that housed the Gate of Time that got destroyed, losing then its importance. To the southeast is the Farron Woods, also where the main source of water is located, in what would be the Zoro's Domain. A link between worlds for the 3DS from 2013. The map is practically the same from Link to the Past and it makes sense since it happens only a few generations in the future. The more interesting thing here is the discovery of Low Rule a parallel realm to Hyrule but not quite the same as the Dark World was, as the land is literally falling to pieces with gaping rifts on the ground because the realm lacks a Triforce. So maybe this was starting to happen in Hyrule as well in Twilight Princess, as a piece of the Triforce was sealed with Ganondorf in the Twilight Realm. Triforce Heroes for the 3DS from 2015 is the last entry outside of Hyrule as well, and I'll be honest and say we haven't really played it, but from what I researched, it shows the kingdom of Hytopia, surrounded by Drablands, but people can't just walk into the Drablands, and must use a portal to go there. And even so many adventurers are still able to go to and from Hytopia by land. This map could just be a convenient representation of the areas available in the story, and not an accurate topography representation of the region. Anyway, it's not Haru, it doesn't matter, next game. Finally, we got to the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Wii U and Switch from 2017. Being the most recent update we had in Hyrule Maps, 
and the fact that it now seems to be some sort of GPS topographical map, not drawn but generated by Shika technology from the actual terrain, strongly points to this being the most accurate map we've ever had. And it's a full place to connect with most previous games. Death Mountain is similarly located, although some of the old Kakariko villages at the foot of the mountain can't be recognized. They could be any of the destroyed settlements around, or none of them, since it's so far in the future. The Kakariko of this time is secluded between mountains further south. The Zoro's domain is once again to the southeast of the volcano, now with much more stone-worked buildings than a simple waterfall cave, and there's even a backstory to when they moved back and built their domain. Up above it is the Reservoir Lake, from where most of Haru's water comes from and could easily be where Lord Jabu Jabu used to reside in the past. While one of the islands is now cut off from the river, we can clearly see the two islands from the original Zelda here. One with a large tree in the middle, but here alive, the Great Deku Tree. The other with a large dungeon-like structure, the Haru Castle. So there's a good chance the first dungeon in the NES is located inside a dead Deku Tree. To the northwest, there's a newly added Hebra region, where a snow peak would be located. And a very interesting thing to point out is that there's a river flowing down from it, in a similar location to Fallen Princess Zoro's Domain. It only makes more sense to be the same place once you notice the river flows to Rito Village, who evolved from the Zoros. And there's also a Leviathan encased in ice nearby that could be Jabu Jabu. The Great Gerudo Desert is now brimming with life with commerce up into the other races of Hyrule. As some points of interest, we can barely see the remains of the Arbiter's Ground, there's the statues of the Seven Heroines, they are likely a mix from the legends of the Seven Sages with the Desert Goddess of the Gerudo, and there's a spectacle rock in the surrounding mountain, but it's most definitely not the same one once found around Death Mountain, and named so solely because of its shape. The Lake Hylia present here seems to be a different one from the one we are used to seeing in other 3D titles. In Inflow, it has a bridge called Bridge of Hylia, because there were always a bit to the west, and definitely would be west of the Temple of Time's new location. And there's a little lake, now not fed by the river anymore, with a large tree in the middle in a convenient location. So we have a few options. Either the Temple of Time, with the old castle town, was moved again for no good reason, since it's still near its last location and it's not even holding the Master Sword anymore. Or this iteration of Lake Hylia may be again the one from the NES games in A Link to the Past, or the one from Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess and supposedly Wind Waker have mostly dried out. Or this is a completely new lake. I personally think Lake Floria, likely the same one from Skyward Sword, would be the one from NES and A Link to the Past. Rivers change path over time. And in Hyrule, Lake Hylia is just how it's usually called the place where this main mass of water gathers. Somewhere in the far woods is probably where the Kokiri Forest would be located, and also the ranching village of Ordon was close to the spring of the Horse God. While quite far, but still to the south, is Lurin Village, an almost exact copy of Outside Island on the Great Sea. And considering it's mainly a fishing village, it's probably where their descendants live. To the east, we have Hateno village, which is the last large Hylian settlement. It seems to be located close to where the village of the Blue Maiden was. But with its windmills, this looks more based on the previous Kakarikos we've seen than the actual Kakariko from this era. A ranch, built in the same layout as the Long Range from Ocarina of Time, is located in a similar place in the center of Hyrule Fields. And a very interesting thing here is a Temple of Time along with the ruins of a town, located on the top of the Great Plateau to the south of Hyrule Field. The fact that the Great Plateau is such an abrupt break from the landscape reinforces the theory that it was moved. But what many people seem to forget is that it happened long before Breath of the Wild, as it's not far from the Faron Forest, the same place it was in Twilight Princess. The biggest and oldest statue of the goddess Hylia is present in the Forgotten Temple not far from the center of the map, like in Scarred Sword, and surrounded mostly by the same architecture, although now buried deep underground. Going to a smaller scale, we'll come back to the Minish Caps map, as we said, where we can see some familiar names on Breath of the Wild's map, but things don't really line up like this. Sure, they could just have been named after those locations, but three of those locations, 
cranial trail be diminished, match the names and positions perfectly when rotated like this. And many other locations fit well, like Haru Castle, Lake Hylia in a forested area, the Castle Wilds in the wetlands, and even a small lake on high grounds that could once have been the Veiled Falls. With all that, we have covered pretty much every single Zelda map, and I believe we were able to show that the land of Hyrule hasn't changed that much over the ages, and that almost every game takes place in the exact same Hyrule. That will be all for today, once again let us know in the comments what you guys think about our theories. And if you like it, please click that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. If you want more videos like this, you can click here to check our last theory of Zelda video, in which we talked about the origins of the Hero Shade. Or if you want something a little bit different, you can click here to check our last review about the journey-like game Abzu. And we'll see you next time. Bye!